Hello! Today I'm not gonna tell what GitHub Actions are, but I'm gonna show how they can bring your open source project to life. In the next few minutes, we're gonna see the building blocks to create your own GitHub Actions, and we will also see a real use case that is running tests every time someone's open a pull request or a push is performed on the main branch. So let's begin! First of all, we might want to tell GitHub that we have some actions. And we can do that by creating this folder called .github with a folder inside called workflows. Here we can specify our actions with YAML file. So let's create one right ahead, hello.yaml. First thing is giving it a name, hello world. Now we want to tell GitHub when exactly this action has to be run. So we can use the keyword on and here we can define the method. GitHub Actions have a huge list of trigger methods and you can find them in the docs. But for now, we'll just use push. This by itself is enough as it means that every time we do a push, this action will be executed, but we can also specify the branches. And for example, we can say that we want this action to be run only when there is a push in the branch main. The other most common case you will usually find on open source projects is on pull requests. You can add multiple triggers here just by typing them one after the other. So we can say pull request and we can say again on branches main. In our case, this action will run either when a push is performed on main or when a pull request that is targeting main branch is created, reopened or synchronized. Which means basically every time something happens on a PR that is changing the code. Here we see an error and Visual Studio Code is actually telling us that we're missing the property jobs. That is exactly the property that tells GitHub Action what to execute when the trigger condition is met. So let's create one. And as you can see, it's jobs with the S because you can actually define more than one job in the same action. In our case, we will just create one for the demo purpose. That will be our hello job. So this is the ID. And we also have to define the environment where the action will be run. We can do that with the property runs on. And here you can specify the operative system of the machine that will run your action. The most common is Ubuntu latest, but you can also specify a particular version. Latest is not the latest version of the OS, but rather the latest image which GitHub Actions have available. In this case, latest equals to 22.04. Let's keep latest for now. And let's go to the next keyword, or actually the property, today's steps. This is because again, you can have multiple jobs, and each job can and usually will have multiple steps, as you can also read here from the documentation that we have in line. The final property we need is to tell exactly what our single step will be. In our case, all we want to do is run a single echo, so runs echo hello world. Here there's an error because it was expecting an array. Like I said, steps accept multiple items, so we might want to use the array syntax, that is with this dash over here. For example, we could also make it more complicated by multiple elements in the same actual element, because we can add a specific name for, well, maybe singular, for this specific step. Hello, step. Okay, so this is the complete action. We can immediately commit and push to give it a try. I will use a git alias as usual, so git commit all, as you can see, it's an alias for git add and git commit with the message that is set up hello action. Now we can git push and let's go over GitHub and see what happens. So this is our project. If we go on actions, we can see the action is actually running and there it is. It's already completed. What happens here is that our job has been set up by the GitHub actions environment. The operative system is Ubuntu 22.04, as we said, and here, this is our hello step, which says, hello world. That's great. We now have the hello world running on our actions, but now we want something more useful like running the test. So let's see together how you can do that. Let's start by duplicating our existing action so we can go faster and rename it to tests. So let's also change the name run tests and we can keep on push and on pull request. Now we no longer have the hello job, but instead we have the tests job. Again, we need to tell where to run the job. So it runs on and we can keep 
Ubuntu latest. And now that's where the things get interesting, because in our steps array, we will have more than one. The first thing, let's say, let's give it a name, because when, when you have multiple steps, it's better to name them, so that even in the logs, you can better reconstruct what they do. And this will be our checkout job. Here we can use the property uses and type actions slash checkout at two, actually v2. And what is this user's keyword? Well, it's gonna use another action to be run as part of the step in your job, which means, as you might guess, you can use actions made by someone else and you can also write your own GitHub action that can be used within other actions of someone else. So this is the most common action to check out your repository and it is usually followed by another step that is setup node. Again, we're gonna use the property uses and now the action we're gonna use is actions slash setup node, again at version two. Now to go to the next level, we also want to specify which node version we want to use to run our tests. So we can use the keyword with which lets us specify some parameters that will be injected in this action. In our case, we want to say that our node, node version, if I can type properly, is 16.18, for example. But you can use whatever version you want because they're usually all supported in the actions over here. Now, we got our environment set up, we checked out our repository, and node has been installed. So, what is the next step? Let's give it a name as usual. And this will be install dependencies. How do we install dependencies in a node-based project? Well, we run a script that will be npm install. Actually, since we run a CI, there's a better command that is npm CI, which goes faster for pipelines. And now, finally, the last job, I keep writing names, don't know why, that is our run tests. How do we run the test? Well, again, it's as easy as run npm test. This will run npm test in the environment and the output will be submitted to the GitHub action. The result will be basically the same as typing npm run test here in the console. Hello world, one test passed. Now, git cma, add tests action and git push. What do we expect here? Well, on our actions here, we now want to see the hello world action running, but now we also add run tests over here, and we can click it to see what happened to our tests. Add test action, it ran the test, it took seven seconds, and these are all the steps we defined, ending with run tests. It ran our NPN test, and this is the result. You can also see a summary over here of all the actions that are run, in case you notice, we have this green check now over here, which tells that all checks have passed. So our hello world action and our run test action. We can also see that both have been triggered because the push happened. But what happens if tests are failing? Well, we want our GitHub action to let us know so that we're not gonna close the pull request until all the tests are passing. Let's see together how you can start from the hello world action and set up the test action in just a couple minutes. To do that, let's create a new branch. So git checkout dash b failing tests. Now I want to make sure the tests are failing, so t.fail. And yes, in local we have a test failing, so now let's push this commit and see what happens. git cma, failing test, and git push. Now, what are we expecting? Well, the first difference is that GitHub is telling us that we can create a pull request, but the actions have not been run for this push. This three minutes ago was the last pushes we did. And the reason is because we specified that we wanted to run the actions both on push and pull request on branch main. Since we just did a push on the branch failing test, the actions have not been triggered. This also means that if we're going to create a pull request, well, this is one of the triggers we specify. So we create our pull request and the actions are running. It might take a while, but here we are. Actions are queued and waiting to run. After a few seconds, hello world is green, but hey, this is failed. So GitHub will tell that some checks were not successful. And this is exactly why you want to run tests on GitHub Actions. Now that you see that this pull request have failing tests, 
you might want to tell who opened it or if it was yourself, you might tell yourself <laughs> to please fix the test before merging the pull request. Actually, here the merge pull request button is enabled, but you could specify in the settings that in case some of the checks are not successful, the merge button is disabled. If we want now this test to pass, we can just get back here at pass, git commit tests are fixed and git push. In a few seconds, the action will be triggered again and the test will run again as you can see here because this commit had failed in tests, but this new commit will have again the actions run. Hello world is queued, run test is in progress and let's see in a few seconds what is gonna happen. Okay, tests now are passing as you can see from the green check mark over here and we can finally merge the pull request. In case we merge the pull request now, maybe by deleting this message, we will see that the test will be run again on the main branch because what happened? We just pushed the commit on main, so tests are running again on main. I think there is a lot more to cover about GitHub Action, that's why I'm gonna make more videos on this topic, for example this one over here, you can already go watch it. But first, if you watched this video until this point, I think you're interested in the topic, so make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any future video. Leave a like here so that YouTube recommends the video and go watch the other one. See you there!